Should you make your ex miss you through limited contact or no contact? How do guys really feel about being called daddy? If you ask a guy whether he's single and he says, why do you want to know? What can you possibly say back? And how do you be more confident, exuberating fun and playfulness in your dating? Welcome to Ask Mark. It's week number 44 and I have dates for you. This is very exciting. I'm so, so excited to be coming to a city near you. Dates are as follows, and I'm going to put these up on the website soon, but you've got an exclusive early look, 2018 tour dates. I'm going to be in Brisbane on the 6th of January. I'm going to be in Sydney on the 10th of February. Melbourne on the 17th of February. Los Angeles on the 3rd of March. New York on the 10th of March. And Miami on the 17th of March. So make sure you jot that date down, keep the day clear. If that's you, I can't wait to see you in your city. And if that's not you, I will have more dates coming soon after that little tour. Let's get straight into the content this week. Join the Facebook group if you're not already a member. Make sure you hit that big red subscribe button and let's go. The question is from lovely Edith, Edith R, who says, hi Mark, um, I was wondering why you talk about limited contact uh, and in a video from a year ago, you say a month of no contact. Why the change? Get some consistency, you bloody dating coach. And which one works better if you want your ex back when working on yourself? So limited contact or no contact? Which works better to make your ex miss you? So before I get into that, just a word, if you don't know what limited contact is, it's something I talk about on this channel, but it's not something you hear from a lot of other coaches. It's basically the idea that you don't have to be a cold, heartless person who blocks someone out to be your best self and make that person miss you. In fact, sometimes it can actually be detrimental because it's not authentic to who you are and your best self. Limited contact means no contact from your end, but still reply respectfully, show the type of woman that you are. So which works better to make your ex miss you? Again, let's look at the question we're asking ourselves. How do I make my ex miss me the most? In other words, you're asking, how can I give him the most negative emotions? The most negative emotional experience. That's not the best question to ask yourself. That's a question coming from ego. The real question you want to ask is how do I be my best self in this situation? So I have clients write out an authentic you statement as to what their best self would do. I'd encourage you to do the same and to read over it to decide what to do in your situation. There will be times where no contact is a better answer to be with your best self. For example, if the guy keeps coming to you, he's clearly emotionally attached, you want to get away, then you might have to say, for both of us, I think it's best we go no contact for a while. If there's a situation where you can't get your emotions out, you're so tied in to someone who you know is not good for you, who your friends are telling you is not good for you, who I'm telling you is not good for you, but you need to get those emotions out, letting him know that you're gonna go no contact for X period of time, 30 days, 90 days, maybe longer, could be a very wise decision for you. And setting those boundaries might well be in accordance with your best self. If there's been extreme disrespect there, especially recently, no contact is much smarter because it means you're not giving time to someone who frankly hasn't earned it. Even though later on, you might come to see, you might come to be grateful for that because of what you learned from it. So the answer to the question is basically to ask yourself, what would my best self do here? And do that. Because when you're being the most authentic to you and the person you want to be, that's actually, as a secondary effect, going to have the most attraction from your ex anyway. But really think about reframing the question and being the best you and the answer of no contact or limited contact will come to you. Good question, Edith. Thank you for sending it through. Uh, the second question is from Avgonima. Uh, and this is on the... Uh, how to ask a guy if he's single video in reference to the final example where I said most of the time you can just walk straight up and if you present it right you can just say hey are you single and the guy's going to love it but the question is what if he asks why you want to know okay well this totally depends on the way he says it if you go up to him and go so hey are you single and he's like well, why do you want to know it's like, oh God, well, sorry I asked that. No reason, I'll be leaving now. Let's say he's more playful though, and he responds with something like, ah, so why do you want to know? Well, that's when you can respond with, oh, can't a girl ask if you keep guys single? Straight eye contact, it'll work well. Really good question. Uh, next question is from Kai, and Kai says, I sometimes 
Randomly, call guys I date for a while, daddy. <laughs> I don't think they like it. Opinion mark. Um, yeah, Kai, I'd be pretty careful with this one. If you started calling me daddy, or if I started calling you mummy, you'd probably be a little freaked out by that. Now, we all have bedroom fantasies, and if this is you, then cool, good on you for that. But I'd be pretty careful, Kai, and get to know someone really well before you go into those types of fantasies. Uh, and number four is from Southern Locust. And Southern Locust says, Yesterday someone told me he could tell I'm all business. Uh, is this a negative thing? I didn't know how to take it if he was saying I'm too serious. Granted, I'm not all business all the time, but I'm also not as playful as I could be. Uh, how can you increase confidence to become more playful and fun? And I was thinking about this question and I got really excited because I was going to create a separate video and I got too excited and I decided this question needed a whole video series. So I'm going to do that. But for right now, I just want to give you a couple of little quick things just to add playfulness, excitement, fun to your dates. Because this, this is just such a wonderful question, but how to do it is something a lot of women, a lot of people struggle with. So movement in your dates. Adding movement, as in moving places, literally just whether it's walking around, whatever it is, adds unpredictability and adds new environmental stimuli around you. That means there's always going to be new things and more fun coming through, more opportunities to create fun in your dates. And in the follow-up videos, I'm gonna explain more on how to do that. The other way to instantly add playfulness and spontaneity in your dating is by adding challenge, fun challenge to your dates. So you can do this by suggesting dates that are competitive, say a bowling date or a uh, time zone, arcade game date, something like that. But you can actually add in challenge anytime. So let's say a guy asks you a question that's maybe a little bit forward or maybe you're not 100% comfortable answering yet. Something like, oh, what's your biggest fear or what's a particular, what's a weird date story that you had or he just asks you something where it's kind of cutting close to that line of what you're comfortable with answering. This is a really good opportunity to add in challenge because you can say, oh, that's forward of you. All right, I'll tell you what. You skip down this street up to that lamppost and I'll tell you 100% true what my deepest fear is. Adding fun, spontaneous fun. It could be him getting to the third branch in a tree. It could be him speaking in a British accent for the next 10 minutes. Whatever it is, finding little fun challenges that you can add in spontaneously anywhere, anytime. And this is why movement is so good as well because there'll be all sorts of opportunities for this. Adds fun to your day and then increases the connection when he comes back or when he's done his thing. He can then give you a challenge and you can do the challenge and you then get to ask him a question he has to be 100% honest about. This is also a really great way to bring in those questions that might otherwise be quite weird. So questions like, okay, well, what is your biggest goal in life and what drives you to it? Questions that if they came out of the blue could sound quite contrived but if they're based around a game or a fun challenge, you're allowed to ask them and the person has to be honest with you. So that's a couple of little ways to just add spontaneous challenge fun to your dates. Well, thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts, comments, questions, etc. Put them all in the space below. Give the video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button with the little bell so you get the notifications as well. And don't forget to join the Facebook group and mark down those dates from the start of the video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next Ask Mark very soon.